Listen to this. Isn't this beautiful? Tidak selalu hasil akhir yang diutamakan. Tambahkan semangat, keingintahuan, keberanian pada prosesnya. Perjalanan menjadi mengasihkan dengan temuan yang menyenangkan. Seperti banyak perjalanan yang telah saya lakukan sebelumnya. Hari ini, kita mulai satu perjalanan lagi. Oke, okay, Seraphin here. I'm taking over. Today we're taking on high waters. <laughs> no, not this journey on the sea, but it does have lots of water. We're gonna make this 100% extremely high hydration bread. For those that are not familiar with the term, the hydration of a bread is how much water there is compared to the amount of flour. 100% hydration means there are equal amounts of flour and water by weight, which as you can guess means a very wet dough. When you work with such a high hydration bread, the main goal is to take it from a very slack and sticky dough to this. Because this type of dough is something you can actually work with. Okay, let's get to the recipe. We start with 200 grams of bread flour. Adding that into a medium-sized mixing bowl, then 5 grams of salt and 2 grams of instant yeast. Mix evenly in a large motion. With all of the ingredients nicely inside the mixing bowl, we're going to mix in 200 grams of water. And by mixing in, I mean continuously mixing with chopsticks using one hand and the other hand pouring in water gradually. We use chopsticks just because they're really convenient and it feels like they get the job done really quickly. However, it's fine to use a spatula or other mixing tool instead. You know, just anything that gets the job done. Once the water is in, we add the next liquid, which is olive oil. 10 grams of it. Olive oil, as with any edible oil really, will help soften the bread a bit. So that's a plus. Round after round of chopsticks go around. This can take about a minute. Just keep clearing it. Don't forget to clear the sides of the bowl. We must leave no flour behind. It's taking shape now, getting to look the way we want it to. And we keep mixing this until it forms a homogeneous, shaggy lump. So the flour has all been hydrated and the ingredients are well mixed. Cool, so we cover it and let it rest for 30 minutes. Wet our hand. Take one side of the dough and put it as high as it'll go before folding it back down. And then we'll do this three more times, one for each side of the dough. Flip it over, cover and let it rest for another 30 minutes. So when that time's up, we perform the same steps as before. You may notice that the dough is easier to work with. It's plumpy and fluffy, which you should be able to feel from across the screen. Just look at that little jiggle. That was our second stretch and fold. Cover and let it relax for 30 minutes. We're ready for our next step. For this third step, we're gonna laminate the dough. So first, let's sprinkle a bit of water on the work surface. Now let's flip our relaxed dough onto it. After two rounds of stretch and fold, 
the dough should have developed sufficient gluten structure, it should be easily sliding out of the bowl. We'll want to wet our hands to avoid stickiness. So laminating is a good way of gluten development like stretch and fold and kneading. It's done by stretching the dough out to a thin sheet to its extreme without tearing, of course. Be sure to treat it gently while doing this, and this is best done in the early stages of bulk fermentation. As soon as the dough has developed sufficient elasticity for us to stretch, that's when you should do it. This step is good for how thorough it is and also its gentleness. There's also the element of exposing the dough to a lot of air and folding that in. So after stretching, we then fold it back upon itself. Roll it up to create several layers of dough. Then put it back into the bowl. Cover and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Then what we'll do next is pick the dough up using both hands and then let gravity stretch it out a bit before folding it back on down. Do this three more times, one for each side. This is coil folding. It is very similar to stretch and folds, just a lot more gentle. Since in this approach, instead of pulling up the dough, we let gravity sort of naturally stretch as far as it'll go, and then fold it. So after that, cover and let it rest for 30 minutes. Okay, so once that's over, we continue. Dust the work surface, we're gonna pre-shape our dough. Throughout this stage, the dough can get sticky, so feel free to add flour as necessary. Now let's get the dough out of the mixing bowl. Beautiful. So now let's pre-shape the dough. We're gonna fold the sides into the center and then we flip the seam onto the bottom. Cover and let it bench rest for 30 minutes. We're also gonna prepare the proofing container. This is a one liter glass measuring jug. A deep bowl is also fine. We've lined it with cloth and we'll now dust it with rice flour. After that, we'll want to dust our work surface with bread flour. We are now going to shape our dough into a boule using this simple technique. Use a scraper to slide around the dough, push forward, and release the scraper with another scraper. Round it up to increase the surface tension. Scoop up the dough and Put it into the container seam side up. Pinch the seam closed with your fingers. Dust it with rice flour to prevent the dough from sticking. Wrap it up like a little gift to yourself, which it's gonna be when we eat it later. Then further cover it. Retard overnight in the fridge to develop taste. After such a long cold fermentation, the dough has developed more flavor through extended enzyme activity. It gives out a pleasant aroma. Okay, more apt, maybe mouth-watering. So let's bake it. Cover it with a parchment paper, and then in a very fun act, flip it into our baking dish. Nice. Peel open the cloth carefully.
brush off the excess rice flour. Score it to control the expansion. Then cover it. Let's bake it. So it's in a preheated oven, top bottom heat. Oh, look at it, it's so beautiful. And then after 30 minutes, we take off the lid and it's done. Wow. You can just hear the crunchiness. And then, okay, now we'll cut it. Off. Oh my goodness, look at that crumb. It's amazing. Wow, this looks amazing. 